So in the land of semiconductor investments, Intel's putting another $3.5 billion into its plant in New Mexico. What's your minimum specification? At this point, the semiconductor shortage worldwide is well known. We're having limited amounts of chips and limited amount of substrates in the supply chain. Both Intel, TSMC, Samsung are all having issues trying to supply all of its customers with everything they need. Now, these companies have been on a charge of late, announcing investments in both their manufacturing facilities and other facilities around the world. And today's announcement is no different. Intel has decided to announce that it is investing $3.5 billion into its uh, packaging and testing facilities in Rio Rancho, New Mexico. Now, on site, they already do lots of packaging and Optane uh, development, but the announcement today is an extension of the current facility in order to enable both EMIB and Foveros 3D packaging technologies. Currently, with Foveros, Foveros being the highlight of this investment, we have two known products that are kind of in the market or at least announced. We have Intel's Lakefield, which is their kind of ultra-low power mobile chip, with die on die stacking, that's what Foveros is. And the second product is the uh, yet to be released Ponte Vecchio massive 47 die GPU that's going into the Aurora supercomputer at the end of the year. Foveros, as a die to die stacking technique, uh, first pioneered around 2008 in research papers, and it's taken about 12 years for it to get to commercial viability. Uh, Lakefield was essentially a small run in order to prove that the technology works. Ponte Vecchio is proving that the technology works on a much larger scale, and now the new facilities will be designed to help co-package technologies together in a Foveros-like context. Intel has stated that uh, ground will break later this year in 2021, and they should be producing product by the end of 2022. I have asked Intel whether this is specifically just for Intel products in the future, or whether they will go through uh, Intel Foundry services. They said they weren't going to comment on that. However, control of the expansion will be under the current manufacturing uh, regime at Intel. I had seen some reports that this te this uh, new facility might be helping with Intel's 3D Crosspoint and Octane technology now that they no longer have a manufacturing facility for that. But I confirmed that that wasn't the case. This is purely for extending 3D packaging. Today at the announcement, they actually had an in-person outside announcement at Rio Rancho. Uh, they invited the uh, local press, also the uh, local uh, senators and a congresswoman and uh, people involved on a government level. They were keen to point out that it was a public plus private investment. However, we haven't heard from Intel exactly what sort of public investment is being done currently. The 3.5 billion could all be 3.5 billion from Intel, or it could be a mix and match of tax breaks or land tax breaks. We're yet to see exactly where that falls. This announcement today is an extension of Intel's IDM 2.0 strategy, which CEO Pat Gelsinger announced earlier this year. We've covered it in a video that you can see here. As transistors get smaller and smaller and it becomes harder and harder to do manufacturing process node development, we're looking at to try and make smaller dies of the most dense transistors for performance and then use larger process nodes for things like I.O. And this is essentially what this die to die Foveros stacking is. When you combine it with EMIB, you can have tiles across a whole package. And the idea is that if you split everything up into the best technology for the process, you'll save money by having uh, it on the cheapest process possible for each separate part. But also improve yield because your dies are smaller and therefore less prone to defects. And you can get better binning because now each chip becomes uh, binned better for frequency of voltage. The downside would be yield in packaging, and that's what Intel's uh, been doing quite a lot of recently in terms of research. So this new facility, now that they're building out their manufacturing facilities for EMIB and Foveros and 3D packaging, means that they must be at a point now where they're comfortable that their 3D packaging is of a sufficient yield to become more in more global in terms of uh, their product portfolio. We already know that Intel is looking to de to develop EMIB and deploy EMIB in its 2023 product line uh, with Meteor Lake, and no doubt with some of the uh, discrete graphics or XE graphics solutions, they will also be using EMIB, and we may see a few using Foveros in there as well. Now, 3.5 billion might not sound like much. Uh, Intel made about 80 billion dollars last year, and this year they're looking to make roughly the same amount as well. So. There is a question, uh, Pat Gelsinger was uh, put out on 60 Minutes uh, at the weekend, that's a 
you know famous Q and A show in the US. Uh, CBS has the full segment for th- it's about thirteen minutes long that uh, you can watch. It was asked, you know, why does Intel need public money if uh, this three point five billion dollar investment for a company that makes eighty billion dollars a year? Why should the public put money into it? And Pat's answer was the fact that Intel manufacturing is essentially, you know, part of the whole U.S. manufacturing process. And right now, uh, semiconductor manufacturing is so much Asia centric, especially on the leading edge, that it's worth the government, you know, kind of investing out. He didn't say those exact words, but you could kind of read between the lines. Um, We fully expect that there will be more formal announcements as it relates to Intel and the Chips Act and how the government is going to get involved in that in due course. Personally, 3D packaging is actually really, really exciting at a, at a time when you could say that Moore's Law is struggling to proceed. Having additional packaging technologies, being able to put uh, chips closer together, get increased bandwidth, lower uh, petajoules per bit, really helps kind of develop a new angle in terms of chip design. The only thing I worry about in this case is additional cost. I mean, we're already seeing that putting two die, two chiplet dies and an IO die on a single package, there really is a base cost when you have to bring in dies from different parts of the world into packaging just on a simple substrate. So when you add that into interposers with EMIB or stacking with Fovros, it suddenly gets a lot more costly. And I'm worried that those costs will just raise the bar for these technologies by quite a lot. I mean, I could imagine a point where something like Emu or Fovros won't be applicable to any product that's less than $500 because just because it's so expensive to do. I really want to see the economics of these things come down, and I guess that won't actually happen until they're making them in bulk. My minimum specification here for Intel is uh, when the, when the uh, new facility or when the extended facility is done, invite me. I'd like to take a look. If you keep watching, you'll get a cat tax in the end. But in the meantime, if you like the video, please give a like and subscribe. We just passed 20,000 subscribers. Uh, Many thanks to you all. And if you feel the need to uh, donate to the channel, then I have a Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash techtechpotato. It really does help out. Uh, I've been buying a few little fun things for reviews to come uh, later later in the month, uh, maybe next month, depending on when it arrives from China. Uh, But this is all money that you guys have put in, so thank you very much.